Welcome to Writing Tandem, a podcast about building businesses, leadership, and creating positive impact for our communities. I'm your host, Vivian Kavam, and I invite you to ride tandem with me as I have candid conversations with inspiring business owners, leaders, and experts who are building on their dreams and creating impact. Get ready to be encouraged and learn practical tactics to help us build successful businesses, become incredible leaders, and have positive ripple effect. Let's go. Welcome back to this episode of Writing Tandem. Today, I have Sue Pitts here to have a great conversation about AI, which is just such a hot topic right now. But before we jump into all that, let me tell you a little bit about Sue Pitts. She is a seasoned business advisor, and she does have extensive experience, which I have tapped into, as has Michaela alongside me. Sue's just amazing at guiding small businesses to success, and she currently is serving as the regional director at the Iowa Small Business Development Regional Center in Council Bluffs, Iowa, and you probably, if you've listened to any of the other episodes, have heard Sue's name come up more than once because Sue has helped so many businesses locally that we've chatted with on this podcast, and so her organization and Sue Pitt specifically comes up often, so if you're like, huh, this sounds familiar, you haven't met her yet, but you've heard her name a lot. She works closely with startups, um, existing businesses in Southwest Iowa, and really helps them grow and scale their business. And she has over 20 years of experience with business development. Sue has also developed a deep understanding of the challenges, and I think this is important, of small businesses and what they face. And she uses that knowledge to help her clients identify things early, look for growth opportunities, develop effective strategies implement best practices because she just has so much experience in these areas. She can spot things before they happen. And that I think is just a really cool, she's kind of a wizard when it comes to that. And she's also an expert advisor in the areas of marketing, digital marketing, website content, search optimization, all of which I know are near and dear to her heart. But as soon as artificial intelligence started to trend as a life-changing technology, Sue began, of course, researching and utilizing AI to see how it would affect small business industry, because that's what she does. She sees things coming and like gets ahead <coughs> of it. And she sees things coming and gets ahead of it. And she's begun integrating into her trainings how businesses can leverage AI to drive growth and innovation. And that is why we're having this conversation today. So welcome, Sue Pitts. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. Yeah. Finally, the infamous, you're actually famous. I won't call you yeah. infamous. <laughs> Maybe we go with infamous. I'm right. not sure. I think it's funny how no one knows me as Sue. Yeah. It's Sue Pitts. It's Sue Pitts. <laughs> it's funny. Okay, so I've had this conversation with numerous people. There are some people who are just so dynamic. You have to use two names. <laughs> well, thank you. Yeah. I never thought about it that way. I just was always puzzled. <laughs> yeah, Sue Pitts because it's Even not Even when I get greeted Sue. by someone on the street, Sue Pitts. <laughs> Sue Pitts. It is. It's true. Yeah. There are certain people and it's like you have to have both the names. They've got to right. go together. And I think it's because... You just have that kind of personality that well, you can't you. contain it in one name. <laughs> <There you go. laughs> so, Sue, tell us a little bit about, I know I just gave your bio and, and introduction there, but talk to me a little bit about what, what it is that you do on the day-to-day and, and why you love it so much. Sure. So the Small Business Development Center is a, they don't like us to say free, but it is no cost mm-hmm. <laughs> service for small businesses. We're federal and state agency, basically. We're funded federally and through federally through the legislature and through the state legislature. And then locally, we're funded or supported 35 to, in my case, more like 50%. So I want to give kudos a little bit to Iowa Western, who is the grant keeper. Right. So basically, I am their employee, but they have supported the SBDC, at least since I've been there from 2004, to an extent that I can have a second employee to help me. Mm-hmm. So really upping our services and our support to small businesses. So I want to thank Iowa Western for that. Yeah. Huh. It is so good to have partners like that. Yes. Does every, uh, like, because this is a national organization. Right. And so people can find, like, do they call it a chapter? Is it a local chapter? Or if someone so- was looking... So basically regional centers. Regional center. So we have a state center out of Ames. Mm-hmm. So that's the Iowa SBDC dot org. Mm-hmm. And you'd be able to find all your centers or where you are. Yeah. So when you sign up, for, sign up for services, it will automatically bring you to a map. So you can see where you're at mm-hmm. and find your center. The one that's closest to you. Yeah. So if I'm in like California. Yeah. So then that is the America's Small Business Development Center. Okay. 
gov.org, I believe. I don't think it's gov. America's Small Business Development Center, Google it. Yeah. And then they'll have a map of all the states. Where you can find yours. Yeah. But there's only one Sue Pitts, to be clear. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, we, all of us, are no class service to small businesses and to startups. I think a lot of people think of us as business plan writers, and, mm-hmm. and that's a lot deeper than that. It mm-hmm. goes a lot deeper than that. We're about 60% existing business help and 40% startups. Mm-hmm. And yes, we do help with business planning. I'm a big stickler on business plans versus business planning. What's the difference to you? You write a business plan after you have thoroughly done your planning. Okay. And if you don't need a business plan because you're not going to get financing, the results of your business planning could be on napkins or sticky notes all over your room and it still has the same effect that you did planning. Mm. Um, A business plan is a piece of paper Mm -hmm. that gets shelved. They often do, don't they? Yeah. And and if you think of a business plan, the first thing you do is you Google it and you find templates or you use mm-hmm. AI, mm-hmm. And, but you haven't done the planning behind it. So I'll talk a little bit about that when I when we get into AI and chat. Perfect. But you haven't done the planning behind it. So using a template's great, but you need to personalize it. Like, where is your business? What's mm-hmm. the market there? Mm-hmm. What's your product uniquely like? And no one else can write that but you. Yeah. And by doing planning. And planning is usually, we use different models, but it's guessing. So I'm going to do this business, Mm -hmm. and I'm guessing that the market needs this, Mm -hmm. and then testing. And that's the most awkward part, but going out and asking people. Yeah, that validation piece. Yeah. And I know you and I have had conversations about that on panels and various other things about how do we validate an idea. So Yeah, it's our baby, so we think it's a great idea, but Mm -hmm. it, it might need some pivots to actually fit into your market. Right. So speaking of the AI, though, and I love that you're already like, and AI can help with your, business, <laughs> yeah. your business plan, et cetera. Do you remember what you first put <clears throat> into chat GPT specifically? Because mm. there's a lot of AI My out name. there, and we're going to talk about it. Did you really? Mm-hmm. Okay, so you just put in like soup pits, and that was it? Yeah. What did it do? Well, I've died nine times. It gave me a lot of obituaries. <laughs> <laughs> it's the, it, that's probably not the best thing to use. I mean, that's more like Google. Because they don't really get into mm. personal things. And, mm-hmm. and what chat is up to is, I think, 2021. Okay. But with chat GPT-4, it will be more current. Mm-hmm. So that's really yes. not the best thing to put in. But Explain I, that a little bit, though, for people who maybe are new to all of this. So it's changing daily. Mm-hmm. Everything is. I mean, not only – and ch- AI isn't chat GPT. That's right. just a tool. Artificial intelligence, by the way. Yes. Just to define yeah. it for everybody. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There's an update coming for that that is in beta. Mm-hmm. now that some people can use is the fourth version. It will be more current. And when you say current, what do you now. mean by that? Like it's pulling information that's more current? This minute. Mm-hmm. So it will be a lot more powerful. Versus the one right now is pulling information only up to right. 2010? 21. Oh, 2021. Yeah. Well, that's better. Yeah. I was like, 2010? Nope. That's real 2021. Old. I didn't realize that. Yeah. <laughs> I might have to rethink some things yeah. here. And I, and again, I might be misspeaking a little bit because I'm mm-hmm. nowhere near like a techie expert at it. Mm-hmm. Um, my outlook with working with businesses on any level, whether it's marketing, AI, or anything, is kind of on the low hanging, not low hanging fruit, but yeah. on the general area that small business can understand so that they can either maybe do it themselves, but knowledgeably go out and outsource kind of like that. crash course 101 yeah at level set yeah yeah so you need to understand what you're doing and not just going hey i think i need ai or hey i need social media marketing and i'm going to hire someone for 500 dollars a month hand that over to them not have any idea what they're doing right or what i want them to do so it's just getting them on all different topics and levels to understand what they don't know yeah and what they need to know They might, you know, and the reason why you would outsource it is maybe it's a little bit too much high tech Mm -hmm. or they just don't have time because they're busy making cookies for their business. Definitely. So the first thing I put into chat GPT, I think I should have looked back because you can, I can see my whole history. Yeah. Yeah. I should have looked back at it right before I came in here, but I'm pretty sure I put in and asked it to write me. I either asked it to write me a poem about the rocking chair in my living room, (laughs) or I might've asked it to write me a social (coughs) media post with a call to action selling my grandma's rocking chair, which is not my grandma's rocking chair, but that's just what I put in there. And uh, and it did. 
Yeah. And I was like, oh my gosh, I can yeah. even ask it for like a call to action and it gave a call to action. And so since then I have used it for so many things. I've used it to help write video scripts, to generate ideas, brainstorm ideas for names, social media things, get me started on blog posts. I've used it for podcast outlines to help me just kind of right. organize ideas, shopping lists, recipe ideas. I mean, right. what are you using it for? Everything, but mostly like outlines or mm-hmm. as a really fast Google. Yeah. You know, like even when I did this AI class, I asked it to come up with an outline mm-hmm. for me for AI and using it in small business. I think there was a couple more words. And it came up with an outline for me that probably would have taken me a day of just trying to sort through my thoughts, mm-hmm. looking online, what's out there, what's going on. And, you know, and a lot of times I approach these topics from almost like a business that doesn't understand perspective and using a week to understand it Mm -hmm. on the level that they need to understand. So again, I'm not a super expert in it. Right. Understand that businesses need to embrace it and use it. So like you had mentioned already, AI is not chat GPT. That is just something that people are really all the rage about right now. It's just been everywhere in the news. Everyone's talking about it. But AI, artificial intelligence, is, is used in many platforms. And people have probably encountered it and been using it maybe even without knowing, right? Right. What are some of those yeah. examples and things that you've covered or talked about? Sure. So, I mean, basically AI is taking data from the internet and being able to use it to automate things. That's kind of a real simple mm-hmm. explanation. But it can be anything from if you're using Calendly mm-hmm. or you can book me as a booking program. You know, in its simplest form, that's pulling information and data from your calendar and sharing it. ChatGPT is a tool that a lot of these things are using to make it smarter. Mm-hmm. So it's it's a common ground, not only chat, but just the open AI. Right. Um, so it's using a lot of that technology of being able to kind of read the internet or read the data and read the information and jumble it all together so quickly. Other tools are using this. So like Calendly appointments, email is getting smarter. Mm-hmm. It's being able to automatically sort how does it know how to do that? It's reading the email. It's saying, okay, this is a management email or this is a social media email. If you've ever thought of like when, if you use Gmail, how it sorts like the by type promotions of email. Yeah. And things like that. Yeah. yeah. That's AI. Yeah. Um, it's using that data, kind of matching it up and reading what, you know, mm-hmm. that's scary, reading your emails. <laughs> <laughs> social media management, you know, being able to, Put a post on Facebook and Instagram at the same time by, like, using Hootsuite. That's always been AI Mm -hmm. technologies, but with new advancements through the open AI network and then also Google's doing one and I think Microsoft. Bard. I think Google's is Bard. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it'll be kind of the same And Microsoft has one as well, which is kind of like controversial. From what I understand is kind of the guts Mm -hmm. and the brain behind all the other tools being able to use these things. Mm Mm-hmm. What are some of the ways, well, I was kind of looking through like just surprising ways that it's being used with supply chain management, Mm -hmm. customer service, chatbots, which has helped so much with customer service. And that's been around for quite a while. But also, like you were saying, automating things. I mean, that's huge for supply chain management, Mm -hmm. being able to automate things in that regard. Like you mentioned the marketing, social media. It can help with SEO. Yep. So many different things. Are there other things that you're encountering? I mean, I think that covers a lot of it, but basically anything you kind of think of, you can use a big brain mm-hmm. to help you solve, right? Right. And that's basically what it is. Yeah. It's like aggregating. Right. So general management, data analysis is going to be huge, and it's not something that I know right. a huge amount about. I know like, let's see, I thought I wrote, oh, I, and predictive analysis basically. So putting yes. your database of, you know, maybe your POS system, if when, you know, who bought, when they bought, into an analysis AI system, we'll be able to analyze that going, okay, you need to market more in this area, or mm-hmm. you need to buy more of this thing. So the mm-hmm. inventory management and the supply chain management, detecting trends by looking at that saying, okay, it looks like, you know, and it's, it's a little different than some of the data reports that we have now. It's a little more going to be a little bit more predictive. Yeah, predictive is what <laughs> yeah. I, that's, I was thinking. It's like helping yeah. with those predictions and being able to look at that. 
I know I had written down too, which I don't know a ton about this yet, but just also being helpful with fraud detection. Sure. And yep. then one of the other ones was financial analysis as well. Right. So that predict- yeah. predicting ability to yeah. aggregate so much information and go, okay, this is what's been happening. So here's here's the trend that we see. Mm-hmm. And obviously a human can do that. Right. It just takes a lot more time. Right. It's such a time-saving tool. And I think by saying like all of that stuff, we're using POS systems and we're mm-hmm. using financial accounting systems. And if you're not, come talk to me. You should mm-hmm. be. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but all of those systems, as they are working on AI already, mm-hmm. they're all grasping it, thank goodness, and integrating it. So you're going to see QuickBooks Online or Wave is in a, another free accounting system adapting more to into the reports. So mm-hmm. actually taking your data and doing some predictive analysis. Mm-hmm. When you like maybe th- you're spending too much on this. This is what we're seeing. You know, so instead of you analyzing, it's going to come spit up these reports. So you can see that. And you're still going to have to make decisions with those. Absolutely. Obviously. You need to embrace those. Click the buttons. Yes, I want to use AI. Yeah. And we can talk a little bit about the scary. Yeah, I do want to talk about that because we just listed <coughs> a bunch of stuff and people are probably, I know I'm, I've thought like, uh, do I want it? To analyze my finances and that. Right. Um, there's a lot of scary feeling around, I think, especially around things like the chat GPT or like Snapchat now has a chat bot within Snapchat. So it's like you name it, you put a skin on it and and it is causing fear and uncertainty, especially as pieces <coughs> of AI s- start to feel more human. Mm-hmm. Like when we talk about things, you know, combing through data and automating and making it faster, that somehow feels acceptable when it starts almost feeling like you're having a conversation with something. Right. That's where I feel like that starts to feel scary as well as just the data mining in general, like right. the security piece. Right. And I, I think the security piece, because of the advance, advancement of it, I mean, it was blockchain and, mm-hmm. all, you know, I don't know for sure, but I don't hear that as much of the security. I think it's quite a bit more secure. I might be wrong. Um, as just it becoming quicker than us. Like right so now. Fast. Yeah. So <laughs> right fast. now, like, and this is a case for four years, my daughter, or even six years, my daughter graduated two years ago at Iowa State. They were running essays through detectors to see if they were using AI types of things. Mm-hmm. Well, they weren't as advanced as they are in January, which is now more advanced today mm-hmm. it's and just it'll changing so so fast so the ability to have those checkers mm-hmm. is they're becoming not as smart as yeah that the, the level ai of, is winning the fight yeah over the human brain checkers moving faster yeah mm-hmm. so i i think that is scary in my opinion the internet was scary <laughs> Right? All change is scary. Yeah. yeah like the printing it, press it, was very scary. It is scary, but I don't think the solution in my mind, at least now, you know, certainly keep aware and, and definitely there's a lot of like, and I don't have any examples, but if you Google them, lots of weekly or daily newsletters that kind of talk down to people, talk down a little less technology mm-hmm. that you can listen to and kind of keep up on things and just being aware of it. But I also think if you don't, learn it Mm -hmm. and you don't understand it it's kind of like the people in the early 2000s that were fighting social media Mm -hmm. like i'm not going to do it that's a trend Mm -hmm. it's not going to help my business or i'm not going to have a website away and it's not going away it's definitely not going away so and I, i do think it will advance your business and it's going to advance your competitors so if you're not along the ride you know and the so it is scary and I think that we just it's a part of our lives that we need to understand how do you recommend to your clients right now that you're working with getting started one understanding it maybe trying things out for the first time you know and again you're probably using AI more than you know but just with everything booming right now I think it's much more in people's faces what what are you telling people I mean the easiest thing is kind of to start with like Start with chat, GPT. It's probably the easiest one to start with. But also, like, when you're looking into your businesses and seeing things that could be improved, strategies that could be improved, or systems that can be improved, 
you know, start doing the research. As, are there tools that can help with that? I think a great example actually relates to this podcast. So one of the issues that it held me back from getting started was just the time that it would take. And it's still time intensive. However, I did find a, a program called Cap Show. And sure. it's, it's AI use. And what I do is I take the audio from this podcast and I upload it in and then it you know combs through it and it kicks out a transcript. It kicks out notes. It gives ideas on what the title might be. It will give a blog post, a LinkedIn post, social medias. It'll pull out quotables. So it has a whole package that it pulls out from that audio. And it's not 100%. Right. There's plenty that I have to go through and go, no, that's not actually what it was about. But I get to pick some things. Like, here's the general topic. I talked to Sue Pitts. You know, I can put your name in. It helps me get ahead and take the workload down and right. take the time down. And that, that to me, is one of the big things that I'm seeing is for a small business owner, time is money. How about anybody? Right. Time is money. Yeah. And a lot of the tools, I think a lot of small businesses have adopted Canva and Canva is AI. Have you tried the image? The and AI I was just image, saying, text yeah. Text to image. So they, they have text to image, which is you put in. Wild. Yeah. And also really funny sometimes. Yeah. So you can create, you know, <laughs> elephant in the room. I think that's the one I did. <laughs> we actually, there's one on our Facebook page right now that Jenny, who's on our team, she, we had a podcast, The Baking Flamingos. And so I think she asked it. She just put in flaming. I don't know exactly what she put, but something like flamingo baking and kitchen. And it, created an image and it's on our Facebook page right now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and chat is using other technology and putting it into there. So, I mean, not chat, Canva. Canva. They're actually using, and I can't. Magic Write is one of them where you can put in like That's chat in Canva. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that is chat. Yep. Because it's pulling that. It's in, pulling. In yeah. It is using that. Man. Yep. Mm -hmm. Wix, which is a website creator that I have small businesses use a lot. Right. It has integrated in chat. So you can write, say what the paragraph is. My service is in Council Bluffs and we do roofing. And, you know, so you can just kind of put fragments of words and put the details. I mean, you could write 500 words mm -hmm. and put it in there and it's just going to mm -hmm. reconfigure it so that it is grammar, you know, yeah, it grammar correct. helps and, with that. A voice as well. I yeah. know we were talking about this a bit before, but I've also written things and I, and I'm, I like what I wrote. You know, I'm not good, but I want it in a different voice or for a different audience. Mm -hmm. So I've put what I wrote in and said, you know, write this. I always say please, by the way. Do you say please? <laughs> no. <laughs> oh. I was like, please, please write, write this. this. <laughs> like I'm talking to a person. It just feels <clears throat> polite. I'm like, maybe it'll be nicer to me if I'm. But anyway, I'll put in, you know, please write this in and I'll change the voice, active voice, things like that, or third person, first person, et cetera. Female voice. Female voice. You can even put in... Ten-year-old voice. Yes, you could put in two, like, write this for a board member and then rewrite it for a community member right. or, a, you know, that gets really... Or an audience. So an my audience. target audience is mothers with children of two and now my same product is more doctors mm -hmm. or something like that. So it changes the voice. Yeah. So going back to scary i think i think what is really especially with chat hello my friends popping into the middle of this episode i hope that you are enjoying it be sure to stick around to hear the end of this particular conversation it is so good but i wanted to pop in here with just a really fun and exciting announcement TS Bank and Advanced Southwest Iowa Corporation have partnered with several other local companies, ours included at TandemWorks, to host another year of REV, which is a small business pitch competition. It's held on Thursday, November 2nd, 2023, so mark your calendars, and it will be at the Hoff Family Arts and Culture Center in Council Bluffs, Iowa. So this is for my local friends, or if you want to just grab a ticket, fly in, I would love to have a coffee with you while you go to this amazing event. It's for entrepreneurs and business owners, and they will have the opportunity to pitch to a panel of judges to win up to $15,000 to grow their business. Now, I don't know about you, but $15,000 can go a long way. In fact, Michaela and I were Rev Pitch competitors back in 2019. We took second place, and so many good things happened from it. 
TS Bank originally started Rev in 2015 in an effort to spur economic growth and encourage business owners to continue pursuing their dreams. Fabulous. As of today, over $114,000 has been awarded through this program. So, side note here, if you're not one of my local friends, maybe think about starting something like this. But if you are one of my local friends, then I want to make sure that you have the information on this. So, if you or someone you know owns a small business, or maybe you're thinking about getting one started, I encourage you to apply. You can find more information about Rev at tsbank.com forward slash Rev or at advancedsouthwestiowa.com. Links, of course, are in the show notes. So if you're thinking this might be for you or for somebody you know, be sure to go and check it out. All right, let's hop back into this episode. Or the text, the image creators, you know, the image creators, is it going to replace artists? Right. Is and copyright the, infringement. Yeah. Because it yeah, is because pulling from art somewhere. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. So addressing the art, th- you know... <laughs> One thing that Josh had said on the on our webinar, and I can't. And Josh is your. He's my colleague. coordinator, SBD's coordinator. Yep, and he's my techie guy, so he does a lot of. <laughs> <laughs> it's you know one thing about AI, and and depending on how quick it goes and how scary it gets, whatever, it's going to change. We need to think about it in a way. It's going to change the workforce. It's not going to take away the workforce necessarily, but the workforce is going to have to know AI. Mm-hmm. So you still can be an artist, but possibly using that to tighten up your ideas and then redoing it in your own way or making your ideas come quicker or getting out a writer's block. Gosh, it makes me think of back to my, so my background's actually in photography, my degrees in photography, mm-hmm. like fine art photography. Right. It makes me think of the transition from painting to camera and photograph. And how about film to digital? And then you have film to digital. And then, you know, so it's yeah. this has been going on. I think right. it's the speed that's different. Well, but yeah. people were like, well, it's not art because you didn't paint it. You just took a picture of what was already there. And so that was a, that is, and even to today continues to be right. from the artist's perspective. Is it actually art if I didn't paint it or cut it and glue it? And I just took a photo. Right. Is it mine? Did I, you know, is it a piece of art? And so that was a discussion that came up a lot in art history class and just in general. So it's interesting to me how it was a brand new, literally, medium for artists to express themselves. And now you're considered an artist if you're a photographer. It just makes me think, what is the AI artist going to be? Yeah. And I think understanding how to use AI is going to be a skill that's as important as coding. Ooh. Yeah. Or reading. You know, we've talked about that a lot, too, of will will content creators, again, with the chat GPT piece, I know we're really focusing on that, which I think is fine today. It can write. It can <laughs> it's write. It's a copywriter. And it it generates in voice and can change, and it can also proofread and, and all these things. So does that mean it's the death of the copywriter? I mean, that's a big question. Or is it the death of the copywriter or the content creator, you know, social media or writing for your website, et cetera? Like, what do you think? So it's it's really early to tell, but I think the skills change, just like film photography to digital photography. Mm-hmm. I think you need to understand how to use the tools in front of you because everyone else is. Mm-hmm. So it could make, you know, and also just like there's better Googlers, like I think I'm a really good Googler. Okay, explain that. <laughs> Going, you know, searching for things on Google. Mm -hmm. I think it's a skill. Like, I'm good at it. Literally all day long when I answer the phone, people ask me questions. They can't find the answers, but I can. Mm -hmm. We have the same tool. Yeah. Right. So I think understanding how to use these AI tools to the best. And then also taking what's spit out and don't use that, but use it to your advantage. So that is definitely something that I think everyone I've talked to who's using the chat GPT piece, they have all said, yes, it's great, but I always change it. Yeah. And not even just because they're like, well, I'm worried about copyright and that, but they, I think everyone has told me at this point where it's at, and I imagine it will get better faster, 
But right now, I still have to do a fair amount of changing of things to make right. it in my voice. Or I'm like, no, that's not, it just, it doesn't feel right. Right. Do you feel like you can spot it? Yes, I can. Especially, so I had a AI generated business plan. Did you? Yes. Like it just got emailed to you? Well, I had someone working on a business plan and it got emailed to me. Yeah. So. What did you think? Okay. You open the email, you pull it up, well, what goes through your head? Well, first it was 50 pages about a coffee shop. Woo! <laughs> so no one writes a business plan that's 50 pages about a coffee shop. Yeah. No, I don't think it was a coffee shop. Some kind of retail thing, okay. but still, sure. a, a simpler type. And when you're writing business plan, it's getting down to the facts so that someone can read it quickly. And, right. and uh, you know, and I, you know, not to shame anyone doing that. I think it's the understanding of how to use it. But Part also, of me, I'm like, it's brilliant. Yeah. Like, good for you. Oh, yeah, you want to use that. To do it. Absolutely want to use it because it was well organized, but it also was not personalized. Mm. So it said things like authentic quality food. Mm -hmm. Okay, we need more details about where that authentic quality food is coming from, like Mm -hmm. the exact distributor. Right. You know, so filling in those details. So it was very abstract, is that the word, or just not detailed enough? Very generalized. Generalized. Mm -hmm. Long and lots of fluff words that didn't mean anything, especially especially with the local business. So there was not a lot of local in there. Mm -hmm. I think it's a great tool to kind of put in. What I try to do more is write me an outline. And that helps me. starting point. That helps me organize my thoughts. Like write me an outline and and what are the points under that outline that I should research and and do instead of completely writing it. And and I do that for like content and blog posts Mm -hmm. because I feel like then it's in my voice. I've used it, too, for brainstorming. Yeah. When we we do a ton of brainstorming. And, you know, this is interesting because you do start to go, oh, gosh, where are we going to be? Is our service going to be needed anymore? Or will people just be able to brainstorm? And to your point, you do have to know how to use it. So as somebody who's skilled at being able to use it, you know, maybe they don't need us, right? But I also have said, you know, I'm not worried about that. I actually like it as a tool even for our team to use when we brainstorm. Sometimes you just are stuck. You know, if it's Mm -hmm. especially a small group brainstorm, there's only two or three brains. Well, then you're only pulling on two or three experiences and two and three ideas. And so we've used it a couple of times for we're stuck here. So give me some other ideas for Mm -hmm. naming the company X, Y, Z. And we'll put that in. Honestly, You've been doing that for years and years in Google. Right. So it's just quicker. <laughs> I mean, I can't tell you how many times I'm like, uh, I'm going to go look in Google Images and see what someone else has right. put together, done to give me some inspiration. Absolutely, yeah. Going. So the other part of, I think that the big talk is, and, and it is, it's available to everyone and sometimes our minds are not, are not emotionally mature, mm. as in children. Mm-hmm. So when you put something that can write them an essay about a book and a certain 11-year-old's voice. Right on their phone, mm-hmm. you know, it's pretty easy for them to use and not not blaming them. Right. I mean, um, part of me goes, well, good for you. Smart. <laughs> Thinking, yeah, you know, so there's, that. there's two parts to that, yeah. Mm-hmm. So I, and I do think it's an issue, and I think schools are handling it the best way they can. I had three shadow, job shadow students mm-hmm. come to my office, and we were talking and talking about what I do and talking about small businesses and I was asking about what they were looking at doing. One of them was market marketing. One of them was data analysis, something like that in the in the business world. And I asked them, you know, what they knew about AI and ChatGPT. And they three immediately in unison said nothing. Right, we know nothing. <laughs> we're not vaping either. So I I think yeah. it's rightfully so. We don't want our children, you know, not learning. Yeah, you um, like. It's interesting, like. I am curious to see where that goes, but it does make me think too, from a business owner's perspective, are there ethical considerations such as like the students, like, you know, they should be operating in this way. What are some of those things? Have you encountered or researched that? It's never been okay to copy someone else's paper. So Mm -hmm. in my mind, I'm kind of seeing that as kind of copying someone else's paper. So right now where I'm at, and I might be wrong, I'm using it to enhance my imagination and my mind, but writing my own. Mm -hmm. So I think, you know, the copyright. It's like when people are writing copy for their brochures, etc., like just a straight copy paste out, I'm starting to wonder, like, 
for the business owner, is that ethical or should they always tweak it? Yeah. Right. You start going, yeah, I'm not yeah. sure. <laughs> I mean, I always tweak it. I always find it a little bit general mm-hmm. and not local mm-hmm. and maybe and not my name. Right. So on, when I'm writing a blog post or my website content, it's all about me and my business. And, and what I'm finding there is right now general. Too general. Yeah. I imagine, so though, was, it'll get better. Yeah, I imagine, too. And then that's where I think, I, I don't know the answers to this, by right. the way, for everyone. <laughs> I don't know. No. I'm just thinking through that. Like, as a business owner myself, I'm excited about the tools available. I am excited. I love Calendly. I love chat bots that can help with customer service and get people information quickly. Like, I love when I get on a website and I can be like, oh, Yes, I realize I'm talking to a chat bot, but it is helping me. And now I don't need to spend the time on the phone. So I appreciate so many things like that and just automating. Well, also like blogs, you know, some blogs like creative writing, eh. but factual writing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like if I'm doing a white paper and I want to know about what our workers comps needs in Iowa and what does a business need to do. Mm Mm-hmm. If I have ChatGPT and I put in the right things, you can also say I only want this information to come come from .gov websites. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. So if it rates me up something, and then you know it's I feel like it's factual. A source. Um, it's not creative writing. It's it's me reading that information to them and giving them the information. information. Now, what I am going to do is I'm going to research every point right. and make sure it's right. What do you, if we were to summarize everything we just said, <laughs> what would you say are kind of like uh, three to five-ish bullet points. What are a couple bullet points for the pros and what are some of the cons for business owners with all of the AI that's out there? I think I think the pros are, um, you know, there's tools out there to improve your efficiency and productivity. The con there is it might replace employees. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think just like anything else, you know, when robots came, it replaced employees, but new technologies came that employees need to learn. So it's expanding our learning. I think it's a, it's a wild, wild west. So I don't know, but you know, and I I think it can enhance your customer service. It can enhance your decision making, Mm. you know, where you might not have time to really look at your data. You can put it in and, and trust that these trends Mm -hmm. are going to help your business. Yeah, it's good. And I, I think it is important that regardless of how you feel about it, you said it earlier, it is here. And so getting researched on it and understanding it, like just shutting your eyes to it doesn't make it go away. Right. And then you can choose how you want to engage with it, what you are willing to participate in, what you're not. And then you can make some decisions there. And you may discover some things that really enhance what you're doing in some pretty cool ways. Yeah. I mean, for me right now, it's it's time-saving. What do you think are some of the challenges or barriers that you're finding clients have trying to engage with things like this? Like what gets in their way? Is it more of a knowledge, a skill set? A, what do you think's going on? Yeah, I think knowledge, afraid of it. I mean, I have clients that don't have websites. Sure. You know, I don't have time to do it. I'm busy as it is. I'm not techie. That's one of the things I love about it. I'm like, you don't need to be techie. No. You can be. I mean, there's definitely some applications for it. Right. It takes high technical skill and ability. Yeah. If you want to be able to program things and, and customize exactly how you want to use it. You know, and I think as far as what businesses should be paying attention to, I be, you know, almost every industry has, has associations. Yep. And I think the associations are going to the restaurant association. Or mm-hmm. Any of the associations have the responsibility to start looking into it, start trending on what the good things and the bad things to use. So in the least point, you know, if you're going to do any research is, is connect with those as- associations because mm. they're there to find out those trends. And AI certainly is going to be top of mind. And, and that, that way it's kind of like, okay, in my industry, people are using this. That's really, I think, a super smart point that you just made of, because I think there can be a lot of pressure of, I have to learn so many things as a business owner. So leaning into that association and people who are in your industry too, then it's very specific. And I, I was going to add to that, that I think that also helps from like the legislation and, and legalities and all of those things that can be specific to you and your industry that right. you may need to know, and they can help keep you on, on right. top of that. That's good. Yeah. 
Yeah, I think definitely belonging to the those associations and keeping track of them and attending their workshops or uh, most of them do virtual now after mm. 2020, which is kind of a nice thing. Mm-hmm. Okay, I have some rapid fire questions okay. for you. What do you think is the biggest misconception about owning a business? That it's easy. <laughs> That I don't have to answer to anyone anymore. <laughs> you have to answer to yourself now. Yeah, that's true. And sometimes being alone is is hard as well. And and that's why we have resources like myself and mm-hmm. other resources in our community. So you don't you're not alone. Yeah. Which I'm just gonna point out real quickly. One of the ways that you helped our business was during a pitch, or the Rev pitch oh, with yeah. a local bank here, TS Bank. And you were one of the mentors, is that right? Yeah. A mentor, I think it was. There was kind of a mentor team, and then, of course, there were the judges, and then the sponsors, et cetera. And we connected with you, and I think that was one of my more, like, in-depth engagements with you. I think so, yeah. And, man, what a resource you you were and are and continue to be to us and to Michaela and I. Like, oh, there's numerous times where we thought, I'm not sure, I'm not sure. I'm like, Sue Pitts will know. Well, the funny thing is you're probably the most like me, <laughs> so, <laughs> you know... Yeah. Probably exceed in my knowledge in some areas. Well, so it's I mean, nice for me to turn back around to you and go, what do you think? Yeah, it is yeah. good. It's good to have like minds, yes. but with with differences, variances there too. Right. So, um, okay, next up. What's an important piece of advice you have been given and actually applied Ooh. to your life? And I usually say to your business. So yeah, to my I business. feel like if it's to your to your career or something. Gosh, I wish I had time to think. Yeah. I'm not very good at thinking on my toes. <laughs> I, that about, is not true. Or sometimes by thinking the way. about myself. Yeah. You know what I mean? Advice I've gotten. And you've actually applied it. That's the kicker there. Yeah. A lot of us get advice and we wish we had applied it. <laughs> and this this really isn't like life advice or anything like that. But the first thing I'm thinking of is we have a national conference and I think I started in two thousand four. And it was 2005, and blogs were just coming out. Mm. <laughs> but it was kind of like this foreign thing, like blog, vlog, whatever. Right. And I happened to go to this gentleman that was teaching about this. And his advice was, you know, this is the first thing that's coming out that is innovative. So as an advisor, if you're going to be the best advisor, to spend five hours, ten hours of just learning all of the new things. And I have done that. And so people are like, did you go to class for SEO? And it's like, no, I just read a bunch of blogs. Yeah. You know, or just I const- I have that time. That's part of my job. I have that time because I'm learning it for you and your business. So that's – and it's a good block of time of me just learning. So I think that was the best advice that I walked out with that. Yeah. That conference. And we're just applying it again today, like with all this. We don't yeah. know everything about it, but you're right. researching it and willing to share just, what you know. Yeah. I, love it. I mean, when I'm driving, I'm listening to podcasts about now AI. Right. Okay. It's a lot of it's going over my head, but I'm I'm <laughs> hoping it will sink in. Just by like, wait, what does that mean? <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. So, what would you tell your 18 year old self, knowing what you know now? Ooh, what would I tell myself? I don't know how to really put it, and I th- I think I do this every morning. Mm. Like like you are as good as you think you are. Like don't doubt that. Like. Mm. What do I have? Any business doing a class in AI? And it's like, no, you have business. It's okay. Yeah. So I think that doubt, that comes in your mind. And I think at 18, it was probably coming in a lot more. Yeah, it's powerful. Yeah. Michaela has talked about this on here before, but she and their uh, daughter, a uh, little one at home, they high five each other <coughs> or themselves in the mirror, which I think she had heard from Mel Robbins. And they do it. And it is. It's that, like, no, you're good enough. And yeah. you've got it. Don't doubt it. You've got it. Yeah. Okay. So what is your favorite kickback and relax beverage? <laughs> I've had everything on here. Like, yeah. all kinds of people. Ah, from Actually, my favorite is just uh, flavored seltzer. Yeah. And vodka. There you go. That's my simple. That's your simple thing. I'm really into the, the bubbly. Like, the <clears throat> yeah, that's what. Bubbly. One. Mm-hmm. But Actually, I have wine. a. This is like putting me in the category of like I have to have this at home all the time. But I have a soda maker that I make my own bubbly water. Really? Yes. And flavor it like with fresh cucumbers. Cool. And I don't always put vodka in it. I just drink yeah. that all day. <laughs> be just to, yeah, <laughs> making sure people understand. It's all good though. Um, I really love an old fashioned. That's, yes. that's my jam. <laughs> um, is there right now a song, a book, or a podcast that's just really inspiring you? 
So the one that I probably, this is a whole nother podcast. Okay. <laughs> and I don't want to come out as like against any kind of businesses, but of exploring, you know, exploring scams and mm-hmm. predatory types of things. Mm-hmm. So that that's kind of the world except for AI that I've been yeah. in. So Roberta Blevins is in the anti-MLM world, but also not mean about it, just more about ex- exploring different types of, I mean, she, I, I really like how adoring and loving she is. And it's just like, this is my experience with Lulu Rowe. And, yeah. um, but she has some good guests on there and it goes from anything from cults to business, predatory business scams. Mm. So that's one I, I kind of like right now. That one right now. Yeah. Awesome. What excites you the most about the future? I'm talking about so much future stuff. Pro- probably. So I've been doing a little more moonlighting um, and doing things on my own yeah. and, and possibly starting my own business. Cause I think I know how. Really? <laughs> I think you probably do know how. Yeah. Wouldn't it be interesting? I think that would be an interesting thing to follow someone like yourself who has helped so many and then you start your own and then see how it goes. Right. It's a little, it's, you know, it's one of those doubt things kind of like, you know, I'm just a teacher of it. Right. I'm a doer of it. But, you know, being, I was not really a single mom because my kids had their dad, but mm-hmm. but also just had a lot of responsibilities. So it wasn't my responsible act to start a business. And I got into this mm-hmm. in 2004 and loved it. Kind of best of both worlds. I had owned businesses before that. Okay. But now my kids are graduated from college. Yeah. So it's getting, now I'm just responsible for myself. Right. Yeah. Cool. Are you going to share what kind of business you would start? Or are you holding that? Holding on to that one for now. Yeah. Lots of ideas. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> All right. What is something people often get wrong about you? I get told to smile a lot. To smile? (laughs) Yeah, which is something I don't recommend people saying to people. But I think just serious, and I'm not all that serious. You're not that serious. Yeah. Yeah. I'm with you. Yeah. This is really funny that you bring this up. Yeah. When I was probably, I'm just say kind of 14-ish maybe, somewhere teen-ish, preteen, teen-ish, I had a girl come up to me in Girl Scouts, and she said, do you ever smile? (laughs) And I was like, what? (laughs) Like, yeah. I smile all the time. And to your point, I was like, who says that, right? But also, I was like, what must I be doing for someone to walk up to me and say, do you ever smile? Like, it must be quite a different thing outside my body here than I'm experiencing inside my body. And I did realize that I don't smile, or I didn't smile, a whole lot readily because I was often just thinking and contemplating. Well, yeah, which is okay. And people thought I was unfriendly because of it. Yeah, I get that. And that's, that's literally what she was saying. And, and I started to notice then that it was true. Like people really thought that I was intimidating and unfriendly. So Sue, I actually (laughs) did this. This is a real story. I was like, okay, I want to be perceived as friendly because I feel friendly inside. Right. And I want to be perceived as happy and because I'm happy inside but that's not what's coming out of my face and so I did an exercise this is real I every time I got onto the freeway because I was driving by this point every time (laughs) I got to the freeway I would come onto the freeway and I would grin from ear to ear (laughs) until I got back off (laughs) literally to practice smiling and using my smile muscles and to get it like feeling normal and everything and so I would practice smiling and I used the freeway as my cue, so I'd remember to do it. And I was like, people must think I look like a crazy person. <laughs> Just like smiling away, right. you know? But I smile a lot more now. Yeah. I've never had anyone say that to me. Yeah. And I, I, I think... So there you go. Yeah. <laughs> I, I also think it's kind of like we're all different, right? We are. And, you know, with the way I dress or the way I look or the way I smile doesn't, you know, get to know me. Yeah. So I, I sometimes find that a little different. Dangerous, mm-hmm. especially when it's, yeah, when someone asks, like, smile, and it's like, I don't want to, <laughs> you know. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Man, we're more alike than we thought. Okay, last one. You ready? Yep. What can business owners do to make the world a better place? Hmm. You mean like? You work with so many business yeah. owners. What can they do to make the I world mean, I better? I mean, I think, think, think social good. You know, what ways can you give back, but not... not Donating so much. I mean, donating and being social good, there's there's two ways to look at it. I mean, you can do green or you can donate things or you can bring in employees that may not be employed as easy, mm-hmm. but looking for ways that your product can help the community or that your business can help the community. 
But also, and this is kind of on the, on the, I'm a business person side. Right. Not that you don't want to be too giving, but give things to things that are also going to help mm. your business mm -hmm. succeed. So match up those target audiences. Mm -hmm. I think it's a great way to help get yourself known and you feel kind of icky, like, okay, you know, I just want to give. I don't want anything back to my business. But there is a way to, like, not go broke because you're giving. And be classy about it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think it's okay to be giving, but also to have it help your business without being that unethical. Sure. No, that totally makes sense. You know, unless you have a very good bank account that you can, you know, give to other things. But, right. But I find with advertising and with donations, especially when you're in a small town. So Constable's is, is a small town, but even smaller towns. Mm-hmm. You're always being hit up mm -hmm. for this rotary auction or this auction. I don't mean to call it rotary. I love mm -hmm. rotary. But, you know, there could be 20 auctions and there could be 20 Lots sponsorships for the Humane Society. Mm -hmm. And then the newspapers come in with ads and they're having a special page for the football team. I remember our first year in business when I was helping my husband at the time with his chiropractic clinic, we were saying, yes, 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 because we want to be a part of the community. And that was mm. the biggest thing. And, and then you look and it was like in you know, in the thousands at the end of the year, that really didn't go to anything, just getting your name out there. So we tried to organize a little bit more like, yes, here's the budget we want to give. We want to be giving, mm -hmm. but we only have this much. Right. So we have to narrow it down. So we might as well narrow it down to the people that are going to use our services or that's our target market. Sure. That It makes, it makes sense <coughs> what you're saying. We run into... Similar where we want to we want to give, frankly, we don't actually want to give to everything. There are certain things that we're like, well, you know, we'd, we'd probably give here before we give there. But in general, we want to have generous spirits and, and same. And so we actually identified different categories that we were willing to give to. Yeah. And some of them are based just off of things that we really believe in. Yeah. You know, and just that's, a strong that's belief it too. Yes. to us. And so we knew that we would feel that connection and tie and do more than just give the money that we knew because we loved that type of entity that we were going to give our support and you know be ambassadors etc and so we ended up identifying those and then we have a certain amount of money and that does help us then have give permission to say gracefully but no to some of those because there's there's many things you can give to so yeah but I love too how you pointed out it can be more than just monetary it can be skills and time and yeah being an advocate and just talking about you know yeah talking about things that you love so yeah we're or you know using organic materials or mm -hmm. locally produced mm -hmm. food that you're bringing in absolutely helps the community for sure well thank you so yeah. much for all of this and if you're wondering about ideas of places you give you just go to chat gpt and put in what are some ideas for places I could give based off of my interests? Yes, exactly. <laughs> just to bring that all full yeah. circle, right? Yeah. Thanks so much for yeah. sharing. And I do just so appreciate, again, that your support of local businesses, but just businesses in general. We always put contact information here. And so I just wanted to point out to people, because you have said this before, if you're even not in the area, if you reach out to Sue Pitts, she will help you get connected <laughs> yes, to the right one yep, in your area. Absolutely. So thanks again for being here. I really appreciate it. Yeah, no problem. Bye.